Hey guys, Henning and Morton here from Flip Normals. In this episode, we're going to be talking about why do you do retopology? This is a question we actually got quite uh, quite a lot recently. We we fairly recently released a new video on how to reproject from high risk to a low risk, which is something you just have to do a lot in a production. But we got a lot of questions asking, why do you do this? Why do you retopologize <laughs> at, at all? Which yeah, is something that we obviously just didn't think about. Yeah. It's I mean, we've just been doing that for so many years that we haven't even questioned I guess we've questioned it at some point, but it's like it's just become such a normal part of everyday 3D life. Yeah. So we never really stopped up to think and explain why you actually do the thing that you do. So why you read <laughs> is actually a fantastic question. Yeah. And I'm sure there are a bunch of people watching who's read apologizing and they're like, don't really know why I do it, but my teacher told me. Yeah. So uh, let's read apologize. So let's talk a little bit about it. We... um. We have a character here. So we have we have a series which covers how to sculpt this guy, and we have a series on how to, which is coming out soon, on how to actually retope this entire character. And in the last video we did, we showed how to reproject from this onto this. And let's just talk briefly, let's go back to basics here, and just talk about why you actually do this. Obviously, this is a lot cleaner than this in terms of topology, but why do you need clean topology mm. at all? And the truth is, this really just depends on what you're using this for. It's kind of like if uh, if you if you if you were to model a car in the real world, if the car is just going to be static on a roadshow, do you need an engine in it? I mean, it's just a visual thing. If this here is purely going to be a statue or a three D print or whatever, yeah. this here is perfectly fine because it doesn't actually have to do anything. It's just going to be static. The problem comes if you need performance out of it if this little car is going to drive <laughs> or this guy here is actually going to move. Yeah. So if you are doing anything where he actually has to deform, you, you need retopology mm -hmm. or need proper topology for him. This is, let's say you want to rig this character here and you are, you want to take the arms up here to mold this. This is going to be most ghetto system <laughs> in the world, but let's just pretend here. Uh, you're going to, um, take the rotate tool and disable that and then we can just do this so you can see here now we can technically rotate this mm. but this is because seabrush has magic has magic <laughs> <laughs> it has really really good performance compared to a true conventional 3d tool yeah so you're looking at this and be like well this this performed pretty well uh, no no problem at all but you're not going to be rigging this or animating this in seabrush no you can be doing something like Max, Blender, Maya, whatever it is. Yeah, and in other 3D software, like so ZBrush is so specialized that all it really deals with on the canvas is polygons. Yeah. In something like Maya, for example, for example, there's so much stuff going on in the background that, you know, performance from a perspective of, of just having having a lot of polygons in the scene, that that's really it's, it's not very efficient. No. So being able to retopologize something and decreasing the level helps your performance massively. Absolutely. So basically what you're doing is when you are going to be animating this, you are, and rendering this, you are using something like a retopologized mesh here, and then all the high-res details from this here will go through in terms of what, uh, with a displacement map or with a normal map yeah. or a bump map, whatever you want to do. In film, this would probably be done with a displacement map. In games, a normal map. Mm -hmm. Just depends on the requirements. And this means that you can now have the low, the incredibly low res cage or base here, which you can do all kind of crazy stuff with really good performance yeah. and still get all the nice details from this here yeah usually usually what you would have is you have the low one the super low res body there which is the one that the animators would use then that body gets well there, then there would be a higher res maybe like a render mesh or something that's subdivided a couple times that would then be wrapped to something like, this. something like that yeah that would then be wrapped to the actual animation body and the animation body would then drive this render body which at render time would then get subdivided further yeah. and then have a displacement map applied to it because it's actually it's actually something that we struggle with a lot when we hand stuff off to animators even though it's a big vfx production they still need uh, good performance in the viewport. Ideally real time. Ideally real time, because when you're animating, you don't want something that's super choppy or anything. So sometimes we even make specialized meshes that are even further yeah. 
uh, sort of like go even more low res than what we've retopologized just to get more performance or better performance for the animators because they have a lot of stuff in their scene. They might have uh, buildings, something that represents some destruction. Maybe they'll have some effects or something on, on some 2D cards or something. Uh, so they can better assess what the scene is going to look like. So the more performance or the better performance the animator has, the the better the result will get. This is this is so important. When you're working in any kind of production, you're not just working in solo. No. If you were to deliver something like this to a regular, you would be like, <laughs> the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> what uh, is this? I was once in a room... Uh, in, in one of the studios with uh, an animator and a rigger and the animator was just walking around to the rigger and just shouting real time <laughs> why isn't my rig real time <laughs> then he left <laughs> so um, it all ties together here yeah. in order for the animator to have a real time performance <laughs> they need uh, a nice clean base here which looks like something like this uh, super low res and they need this thing here with a wrap to it or with a displace map. Mm -hmm. And it has to just be efficient. Also, when it comes to selecting this as well, in when we're doing, when we're selecting, here we can select stuff based on topology. We can do topology masking here. And we have really nice and clean ways of selecting stuff. So yeah. now you can just drag here and you can just go, ah, that was easy. And you see, you just get this like nice little deformation here for the bicep. You might not necessarily want that, but at least you can easily control it. Mm. But now if you're dealing with this kind of stuff and trying to do the same thing, uh, it's going to be a bit all over the place. Maybe it's going to work. Maybe it's not. Yeah. And it's, then you, uh, it's just a pain in the ass, really. Yeah. And then you're doing this, you see everything breaks. And, <laughs> and yes, you could spend time on softening your masks and making them perfect. But if you just had a low res version of this, you could go in, pose it, go back up to your high res. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's really another, it's a good point for, for ZBrush as well, where, yes, you can't just be sculpting on a super high-res mesh, but performance is also going to be like, even in, in ZBrush, we have this, it's like, what is it, 200,000, 300,000 points. Yeah. Um, it's still not super fast, yeah. you know, when you're moving stuff around and, and modifying things. So having something that's low res that you've retopologized, whether, you, actually, if you've retopologized it manually, like if we show the wireframe of the low res body here, you can see that the face where you would have a lot of detail is actually maybe like double the yeah. resolution of the rest of the body. Almost, yeah. And that's probably what you would go for. So when you subdivide it, it you need less subdivisions to get more detail in the face compared to the rest of the body. And the rest of the body would probably not have as much detail in the face uh, as the face anyway. Absolutely. So there's a lot of benefits to, to retopologizing, especially doing manual retopology as well. Yeah, we'll talk a bit, a bit about sear meshing, which is auto, auto topology versus mm -hmm. manual retopology in a little bit here. Let's just go into Maya where we can actually show exactly what we're talking about here. Let's, uh, and we have the high res here. And this isn't even that high res. This is around, like we said in Zebra, like from 270,000. Yeah. This is already decimated heavily. The original mesh here is around 3 million polys. Could barely bring that into Maya. You can yeah. have and, it there, but. And you wouldn't, like in a production environment, you would never render a decimated model. No. So the add render time, when, when you start to subdivide your model, um, if it's the render version that's already been subdivided once or twice, maybe they'll subdivide it another two times, and then you end up with a couple million polygons. Yeah. So, just for just in, just for you to be able to, or it to be able to support the displacement map. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. So if when you're working in a production, which is honestly when you'll need retopology, at least bespoke topology by yeah. hand. The only thing a rig is really doing is just moving points. You're essentially just saying that if you want to move the leg, you just want to move the leg over from here to here. You're not adding new points or not doing anything. You're simply just transforming the points which are here. So let's try to do that. Let's select these points here. Ah, oh, they're already oh, selected. That was lucky. And let's try to move them. And this is not your video lagging. Real-time performance right there. <laughs> Real-time. <laughs> <laughs> this here is... And this is only selecting like maybe a few thousand polys of verts right here. If, if you try to select the entire thing here and you do that, not going to do that because maybe my crashes. Yeah, Don't trust might, this video. And might crash. <laughs> yeah, let's not risk that. <laughs> but already here, just transforming the foot here is incredibly slow. Yeah. If you were to enable soft select as well, it would be even slower. Let's try the same with the low res. Maybe you're going to guess what's going to happen now. <laughs> Huh, that's all we're selected. Oh, selected. Oh, this was this was strangely real time. Mm. So now you can just take your foot and he can like just move around. You know, like you would with a foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, professional animator Henning Sanden. 
So now you can also do soft select and you can all this kind of stuff here. And this is gonna work perfectly fine with the entire thing as well. You can just select the entire thing here, uh, take the soft select and uh, gonna show some really nice animation here. Yeah, for those who don't know, this is not how you animate, by the way. It's, uh, <laughs> for uh, those of you who don't know, this is how you animate. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is... Uh, you would actually rig this, but regardless of... So, you, yeah, you put in you put in some, some bones here, and you would, you would probably paint weights for this. But the principle is the same, though. You would have a pivot, and then you would have, like, a selection fall-off, yeah. and then you would basically do this. Uh, just not like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... You can do this. You have incredible performance and you can select stuff. You can really easily select. You want to select just a portion around here. You can super easily do that and really have fine control over it. One thing you're going to do is a lot as well is where you're going to do most likely face shapes. This is where you really need to make the eyes blink or really push the nasolabial fold up here. So you might select uh, this region here and just push something like this, you want to go really just kind of pull these kind of different things around here, mm. which this is also not how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you can, at least now you can make a blend shape like this and yeah. you can really make a specific expression. If you really want like a pinch down here, you can, you can just get in here properly and just pinch stuff together and get really tight performance. Yeah. Again, if we look at the high res here, just forget about it. And trust me, like having a high res model where you do face shapes is, is a pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, even uh, what I've done before is is even so that there's like I have two meshes for for doing face shapes. There's the retopologized version, which is just the low res one, then one that's subdivided, and the subdivided version would be our actual face shapes. Mm -hmm. So we use the low res one. And we wrap the high res one to it. So whenever we move anything on the low res, that moves on the high res. And then afterwards, you go in on the high res, and we would like refine it even more. It was a little bit of a, a, yeah. a struggle. But that's that, that's also just why you need good topology for exactly. that as well. Yeah, because like so with with good facial topology when you're doing face shapes, that's it's the most crucial thing for face shapes because yeah. the loops that you s loops on a face are not random or accidental. They all each loop serves a purpose. And that is to be able to deform in the most natural way possible. So if you lay down your loops in a way that doesn't make sense anatomically, then the deformation that you're going to get out of it is also going to look wrong. Like if you're not, you you can't have so with the rest of the body, right? You can do you can do sims on like the biceps, the the forearm, the legs. Whenever stuff bends, you're going to jiggle that kind of stuff. Yeah. But you don't do that for face shapes. That all that's all done by hand. Yes, sure, we have shot sculpting to go in and fix things for the arms and, and the body when they move. And occasionally shot sculpting for face shapes, which is terrible, trust me. <laughs> you don't me. want to do that. <laughs> I've done that. Um, you can. You can. So having proper topology for, for a face, for face shapes, is is just paramount. Yeah. You you In the future, we can probably sim it. Today, probably. Today you can't. Yeah. Yeah, so you really, you really just got to make sure that your loops around here and everything nice is is great then you can really control everything which brings us to zero meshing let's do a quick zero measure of uh, of this guy here and you do that um, under geometry and the zero measure and let's just do a quick zero measure here so now the zero measure has been done and uh, as you probably guessed, this here took a lot less time than what it took <laughs> to make the topology here by hand and if you're just looking at this, you might be like, huh, this is actually really good. Like it conforms around the muscles here and gives you really nice topology all around these kind of things here. And yeah, that's true. It looks like it. Yeah. But if you were to actually use this, you would probably see that there are a bunch of issues here. This is what I'm seeing right away that first off, it's not, you want a loop going all the way across here. This is going to be a real pain in the ass if you start to mirror stuff. But but also in general, this here is most not likely not going to give you all the control you have, particularly for areas like the eyes here. If you compare this to that, mm. you really just need the loops around the eyes, at least if you're doing retopology or if you need proper topology. Like we said, if you're just doing this for like a quick concept or yeah. like a statue or whatever, 3D print, then this is totally fine and just project it back. But you really want good topology around 
something like the mouth and here. This here will cause issues. Give this here to your rigger and he will like slap you. And this is this is one of the main issues with using zero measure for production when you want to do anything. Getting a little off track here, but there's so many issues that need to be fixed in this in order to make it production ready uh, that most of the time you just end up wasting the time that could have been spent just using just doing proper topology. So now you might be thinking, well, I can just delete this region around here and just redo do that by hand. Yeah, but you can also just do it all by hand. <laughs> yeah. Then that way you don't have to connect everything, anything up here. Because what you're gonna what you're gonna realize pretty quickly once you're doing this is once you start connecting the stuff here up, you're like, oh, okay, but this star here is also a bit nasty, right? Right there. Mm. Okay, I've got to delete that. I'm probably gonna delete this entire region here, and then you're ending up literally deleting this entire face here. Maybe you could use the ear. The ear seems to be doing all right. And plus it's an ear. Yeah, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to have tons of these things here, which you're going to have to fix by hand. Yeah. And by trying to fix this by hand, you are going to spend far more time than if you're just doing this properly. But, a, but I mean, from a pure, from a pure reprojection perspective, uh, this is this is fine. Yes. Um, you know, there there might be some areas like the center line there that you just need to go in and fix. Yeah. But just from pure reprojection, this is actually really good because zero measure has this amazing ability to make everything very even. Like the quads are pretty even. Sometimes really there'll are. be stuff that's more elongated where it struggles, but most of the time, zero measure is excellent for pure reprojection purposes. And like Henny said, if you're just sculpting in ZBrush, you just want to make statues or just want to sculpt then uh, I think like zero measure is just fine because everything reprojects just perfectly. Yeah, the, the way I like to think about this is there aren't really any rules in CG. There are like suggestions. And when, in this case here, if you if you want to do this and you want to do this for, for production, you can. We strongly suggest you not to <laughs> because you are going to have issues with it and yeah. you're most likely going to spend more time trying to fix it than you would by but just doing it properly. So, I mean, that's basically why you do retopology in general and why you do proper by hand. Mm. So the reason is really you get good performance and you can really control everything. You can really control all the little wrinkles here and get all the nice shapes into it, Yeah, which is, which is super nice. Uh, one little quick thing I realized when I'm in here, this is just a super nice little, little pro tip for you all. If you if you have a really high res mesh here, like so, and it goes crazy like this, you can go to show and uh, selection highlighting, mm. and now you can it's still selected, but you, you just can't see it. You just can't see it, and so this means that you can actually see the shape of it because right now it's it's basically impossible to see the shape of yeah. anything here. Um, just unrelated little <laughs> tip for you all. <laughs> so um, we do have a, we do have an upcoming series now in a few days, which is will cover how to do this entire. How to do this entire topology here mm. from start to finish, yep. showing everything, showing the reprojection, and showing you how to get a proper model at the end. So and yeah. nice UVs and everything. Nice UVs and everything. Damn, damn, that's such a good tutorial. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we just want to show you why retopology is actually a useful thing. Yep. So yeah, we really hope this here helped you guys. Mm. And if you want more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.